Hello and a very good morning from Bari down in the south of Italy. Now today we'll be travelling with the national operator Trenitalia aboard one of their Fresher Vagento services up to the capital Rome. Now the Fresher Vagento is a high speed service operated by Trenitalia. It's not quite as fast as the um, flagship Fresher Rossa services. Um, we've got a top speed of 250 kilometres an hour today. But I've never tried it out, so I thought we'd uh, thought it'd be interesting to take a look at. So I'm just going to make the quick walk up to the station, and yeah, let's head to Rome. Despite its name, Barry Centrale is located some distance away from both the city centre and the seafront. While a bit on the small side, I did find the station to be really rather nice. While Bari Centrale originally opened in 1864, much of the interior dates from just after the Second World War, when it underwent a major reconfiguration. Just to my right is the Trenitalia ticket office, as well as ticket machines for both them and the private operator Italo. Dead ahead is the Fresher Club, which is the premium lounge offered by Trenitalia. To enter, you need to be travelling in executive class on a Fresher Rossa service, or be in possession of select business or first class tickets. While I am travelling in first class today, my super economy ticket doesn't grant me access, although it is possible to buy entry to the lounge for 20 euros from the ticket office. However, it's a nice day outside and we don't really get many of those back home in Britain, so I'm going to make the most of it by heading out to the platform. The platforms are accessible by this passageway. I didn't see anything in the way of lifts down here, but there is a foot crossing provided, so I can only assume that this is the way they intend people of reduced mobility to make their way to their designated platform, although I should imagine that you'll need to inquire with a member of staff should you require this service. Our train will be departing from platform 3 this morning. The service we'll be taking today is the 0846 Toroma Termini, train number Fresh Argento 8306. The scene departing here is one of FS Trenitalia's intercity notte sleeper trains. I took a look at both the deluxe sleepers and comfort couchettes on one of these trains a couple of years ago, which you can find reviews of in the top right corner of the screen now. Also seen here is one of Italo's Evo tilting trains. These trains directly compete with Trenitalia's Fresh Argento services, and I arrived the previous day in Bari on one of these, so stay tuned for that review. Anyway, our train arrives from Lecce, right in the heel of Italy, about 5 minutes early. Our trip to Rome today will be aboard an ETR 485 Pendolino. The oldest of three types of trains operated under the Fresh Argento brand. These were built by Fiat Ferrovaria and entered service with the Italian national operator in 1997. As with all fresh Argento trains, the ETR 485s have a top speed of 250 km an hour or 155 miles an hour. Based on past experiences, Trenitalia staff can sometimes be a bit funny about people getting up and going walkies throughout the journey especially if this involves moving between classes, so we'll do the obligatory wonder as we board. Two classes of comfort are offered on this train, simply called first and second class, and this is what you can expect from the latter. Second class features fairly spacious 2 plus 2 seating, mainly arranged in bays of 4. One aspect I do have concerns regarding is luggage storage. Due to the train's tapered edges, the overhead racks are rather small, and space on larger stacks at the ends of the saloon is also rather limited. While this isn't particularly a problem on today's practically empty train, I can imagine there being a real shortage of space should you find yourself on a busier service. Mm -hmm. 
Separating first and second class is this rather nice looking restaurant car. However, we unfortunately won't be dining here today, as Italy's rather stringent Covid restrictions mean it has to remain shut for the time being. That said, an at-seat service of drinks and snacks will still be provided on this service. The seats in first class are basically just bigger versions of those found in second, being laid out in a 2 plus 1 configuration. Coach 3 has space for wheelchair users, which of course are located right next to the accessible toilet. I'll be sitting in Coach 2, seat 12C today, which I selected from a seating plan when booking. Trenitalia charged €2 Euros for seat selection, which I would be okay with were they a low cost operator, but they're not, and this is rather stingy in my opinion. For first class, legroom really isn't good at all, and this is going to be even less should you dare to recline the seat. A footrest is provided, as well as something that's trying to be a seat back pocket. You'll also find a tray table, which, while rather large, isn't very sturdy. A cup holder is also revealed when the tray table is folded down, although half of mine had been snapped off so this wasn't very useful. You'll find controls for the recline I mentioned a moment ago in the armrest, with the level of recline on offer here being pretty decent. Rather disappointingly for first class, only the window seats have access to a plug socket. In between the seats you'll find this small litter bin. You'll also find a window blind as well as coat hooks on the wall, although no reading light. Lastly, you'll have to forgive me, as I forgot to probe the seat in my usual manner, but I found them to be okay. I didn't find them to be necessarily uncomfortable, but at the same time, they're not exactly going to be winning an award for comfort neither. But overall, a pretty poor and outdated hard product. But what's your thoughts on the seats? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. Anyway, before we set off, we should probably take a quick look at our route for today. Our journey northwest today will initially see us following the Adriatic coast, before heading inland and eventually joining the high speed line just north of Naples. Scheduled travel time today is 4 hours and 9 minutes and will see us covering a distance of around 502 kilometers or 312 miles. And we depart Barry on time. One thing I should probably mention regarding Covid restrictions, as it may catch you out if you're not aware, is that, at the time of writing at least, it's mandatory to be in possession of a super green pass to travel on any form of public transport in Italy, meaning you'll either need to have had your second vaccine dose within the last 180 days, or have had a booster dose. Now, Italy will accept proof of vaccination issued by other countries as an alternative to a super green pass but it's definitely worth conducting your own research as to whether or not they'll accept your proof of vaccination, as this will be checked along with your ticket and they will genuinely kick you off if your vaccination status can't be verified. Anyway, with all that malarkey out of the way, the host came round shortly after departure with a drinks and snacks service. This is included in the price of a first class ticket, which is nice, and includes the choice of a sweet or salty snack, a hot or soft drink, and a carton of water. We're treated to some views of the coast as we make our way towards Foggia, but unfortunately these are few and far between. Another thing that I think is a bit outdated is the interior. As far as I can tell, bar perhaps the information screens, 
these trains haven't really undergone much in the way of refurbishment, at least not recently, and they're really beginning to show their age. We eventually arrive in Foggia, a city well known for its production of watermelons and tomatoes. In order to continue our journey, the train has to reverse directions here. As for toilets, you'll find one in each coach, and I found these to be generally pretty clean, well stocked, and in good working order. This train is kitted out with complimentary Wi-Fi, and while I could get my phone to connect, I couldn't actually get onto the internet. That said, I found phone coverage to be rather good for most of the journey. The scenery as we make our way across the width of the country is actually quite picturesque, especially on a gloriously sunny day like today. Next up today is Benevento. According to folklore, this is apparently the gathering place for Italy's witches. Now, as I'm sure you can imagine, this has led to several Salem-style witch hunts in the past, most notably between the 15th and 17th centuries. However, it wouldn't appear that we've gatecrashed WitchCon 2022 today. In fact, the only peculiar going-ons that I experienced here was the fact that we pulled into Benevento a full 18 minutes early. Shortly after departing Benevento, we find ourselves grinding to a halt, as we have to wait for another train to pass. This leads to us picking up about a 15 minute delay. We get some rather nice views as we skirt the northern end of the Campanian Apennines mountain range. One thing I will mention about this train is that it does tilt into curves. While not necessarily uncomfortable, you're going to notice it on winding tracks such as this, so it's perhaps something worth bearing in mind if you're prone to motion sickness. We briefly catch a glimpse of Vesuvius, which is of course the volcano responsible for Pompeii. You can change at our final intermediate stop of Caserta for trains towards it and Naples. Up to this point, we have been travelling on relatively old and windy lines, at speeds of up to 200 km an hour, or 124 miles an hour. However, shortly after departing Caserta, we join the Rome to Naples high speed line, meaning we can finally hit our top speed of 250 km an hour, allowing us to cover the final 196 km, or 122 miles to Rome, in around an hour.
I will say that, at speed, the ride quality of these trains is abysmal. They're very rattly and bouncy and just not what you want from a high speed train at all. If you look out of the right of the train while on the high speed line, you should get some good views of the central Apennines as we make our way up to Rome. Eventually, and thankfully for my spine, we begin slowing down as we approach the Italian capital and Roma Termini. Unfortunately, I wasn't really left with good impressions of the ETR 485. Italy is home to some fantastic high-speed trains, but this isn't one of them. The seats left a lot to be desired, the interiors haven't exactly aged well, and the ride quality at speed is downright awful. I'd even go as far as saying that this is the worst high-speed train that I've been on to date. As for tickets, well, I paid €43.90 for my super economy first-class ticket, plus another €2 Euros for seat selection, giving a grand total of €45.90. Euros on the face of it, I don't think that's too bad for over 500 kilometres or 300 miles in first-class on a high-speed train. But when you consider that just under two thirds of the journey is on lower speed lines, it suddenly starts seeming like much worse value for money. So, bar the scenery, really not a great experience. But what did you make of it all? Do you think I'm being a bit too harsh or perhaps even not harsh enough? Be sure to share your views in the comments below. We eventually end up pulling into Rome's main railway station, Roma Termini, around 10 minutes late, at 5 past 1. With that, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to help us out by giving it a like. If you're new to the channel, then you're going to want to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Monday and Friday. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you on Monday.